unfortunately, yes, we've had uh, numerous injuries uh, so far, none of them real serious. But the unfortunate part is I believe we do have our first fatality, and we do have a couple people that are missing at this point. You can hear from Harriet Jennings as to what her family experienced this morning. Just watching the water rise and sheds went by and trash cans and barbecue grills and and they come and got us on the boat and as we was coming down the boat lost power we flipped me my two-year-old great nephew my son and my sister all was in one boat and the boat lost power and it lost us now the water is expected to continue to rise here along Rubidoux Creek for at least the next couple hours as residents are able to finally make their way back toward their homes to check on them and make sure everything is okay. Number one in the Ozarks. This is KY3 News at 9 on the Ozark CW. Hundreds of homes underwater tonight in Pulaski County after floodwaters rushed through them. Mandatory evacuation is now in effect until 5 o'clock tomorrow night. For those affected. Good evening to you. I'm Ethan Foreheads. I'm Lisa Rose. Those floodwaters claimed the life of a four year old boy after he was swept away in a car in which he was riding. His mother is still missing. And the search for that woman has been suspended for the night. KY3's Paula Morehouse has the latest tonight from Waynesville. Countless people in Waynesville received this evacuation notice and they're packing up for the night. They have to leave their homes to go to safer ground. On street after street and house after house, Families spent the early evening grabbing the few things they could to leave. That after the fire department and other emergency crews knocked on doors issuing a mandatory evacuation. With the threat of rain, up to 250 people were told to find somewhere safer to stay for the night. And power and water services were going to be cut off as a safety measure. All this comes after these people were hit by an overnight deluge of water. No, you weren't really prepared. About 3 o'clock you could tell that it was flooding. so. Tried to get out, you know, then and came back in the morning to see what was happening, and this is it. Propane tanks floating down your street. So. And it got about three and a half, four inches inside there, which is just enough to mess everything up. Governor Jay Nixon has declared a state of emergency. He will be in the area in the morning to meet with local leaders and to look at the damage firsthand. In Waynesville, Paula Morehouse, KY3 News. About 55 people are staying the night at a shelter in St. Robert, but more people were expected to show up. For more now on the affected area, affected by the flooding, KY3's Jerry Jacob joins us. Jerry. Thank you, Ethan. For those not familiar, this area of devastating flooding is right along Interstate 44. This is Springfield, this is St. Louis, and it's right between Rolla and Lebanon, which is where you'll find Waynesville, St. Robert, Fort Leonard Wood, and up here, Jerome. And you see the, Cas the Gasconade River snaking through here, okay? And also the Rubidoux snaking through, right through the middle of the town of Waynesville. It's right here along what's called Old 66. Normally in most of these places you'll see there's nothing on either side. Uh, you'll see a comfortable line of, uh, you know, trees and fields. But right in here you'll see these areas of houses here in Waynesville, Pulaski County. And in the town of Jerome, which is just right up the road, in Phelps County, it's the same story. We'll hear more from Jerome here in a second, but here's Jerome right along the Gasconade, and there you see a lot of houses. Very different from what we saw from above today. Normally, it's a nice clean line. Check this out. The water well outside those lines of trees. Just an amazing and disturbing amount of water in excess of what is normally there. A historically high level for the Rubidoux. It is hard to tell where the Rubidoux or Gasconade normally flows in these pictures. The banks expanding well into the fields on either side, the roads and the residential areas, the very few of them that there are, causing evacuations, as you just saw from Paula, and damage to so much property. And remember, all this occurring in just a very short time span. More on the rain way tonight and as far as rainfall, and this could very well go even higher than it is already. Let's talk about Waynesville real quick. This is the area. The Rubidoux goes right through the town of Waynesville, and this is the area of the evacuation. There's the Rubidoux, and there's those residential areas on both sides. Near Dyer Street, the area of Valley Road, under a mandatory evacuation for tonight. Some of those homes already severely damaged by the rising waters, but more in the danger zone tonight as more rain is expected to fall on this Rubidoux. 
could go even higher than its record level today. Ethan. For a lot of people watching closely tonight, Jerry Jacob. Uh, but those living along the Gasconade River say it started slowly rising several days ago, but it was last night that it came up quickly, very quickly. And then this morning is when residents decided to leave. About 6 o'clock this morning, in fact, state troopers and Phelps County deputies started knocking on doors, warning the about 40 families or so in town, uh, in the town of Jerome, to get out. The water was expected, expected to crest tonight. Homeowners worked today to get their belongings to higher ground. Just get it. <laughs> I mean, there ain't no time to feel nothing. It's got just a million things rolling through your head trying to get, you know, what you need to get and what you can't worry about, you know, and just stuff like that. The cleanup and everything being destroyed that's like the decks being ripped off. Because see, flood insurance don't pay for none of that. You know, you just try to get down here early and try to get everybody warned. And the people that don't live here, just moved here, they don't have a clue what it's like when it comes. When it comes and you start seeing water right here, you better be going. And that's an instance. The last time that happened, when the water got really high, just a few years ago in 2008, and the last time homes were actually wiped out by the river was back the major flood of 1993. You all remember that. And unfortunately, there is more rain in the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Ron Hurst joins us from the Storm Team Center. Ron? Well, I'll tell you, it's easy to see why those places flooded this morning. A Lakeway picking up five and a half inches of rain along with Brumley. Richland at six. Fort Leonard Wood just south of there, a little over six and a quarter. Uh, Houston 5.8 this morning. Played almost five inches of rain. At the official recording stations, 2.2 in West Plains, 2.2 up in Lake of the Ozarks, and a little more than a half an inch in Rolla. Tonight's weather charts are coming in. We may lift this a little bit farther to the north and to the east, so hopefully it won't rain in the same area. Flood water swept away a little boy who died. His mother is still missing tonight. We know of hundreds of, or at least more than 100 of businesses and homes still underwater, and now they're preparing for more rain, possibly. KY3's Paula Morehouse has the latest from Waynesville. At this hour, the water is still raging. In fact, you can see it reaching the top of light posts in this area. How many of these do you think you're going to hand out today? Uh, we've probably handed out maybe probably 50 this How, time. Those are just the homes the fire department reach. Other emergency crews were doing the same. In total, up to 250 people were evacuated. These are the pictures from up above. Exclusive video giving us a bird's eye view of the just major flooding there in Waynesville. Uh, we have a lot more of the aerials uh, and the flooding and its widespread damage for you at KY3.com. It is just a mess. A canoe rental facility underwater and water gushing up. Water the story of the day, of course, and a lot more of those uh, pictures at KY3.com. We do have a report now from Dustin Hodges. He just filed it. Let's take a look at what he's finding out this morning. The rain is picked back up here in Waynesville, and as you can see, it's causing some flash flooding here in the streets. You see this wave of water. It's rushing down Missouri Highway 17 here in Waynesville and down to what is Rubidoux Creek at the bottom of the hill. We kick up another round of storms and then watch this. We repeat the process tonight. Here comes another blob. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. This looks to happen again Thursday night and Friday before we hopefully get a little bit of a break. This is where some of the heaviest flooding was yesterday. Here's a piece of debris that had washed down. And as you can see from this rain we've already got this morning, streets are already starting to fill back up. Well, even those not in the flooded areas are dealing with uh, high waters. A 14-mile section of I-44 remains closed from mile marker 172 to 186. That you saw there earlier, a photo from earlier today. You can see the water has reached the interstate guardrails. MoDOT leaders say there are parts of the freeway where the water is six feet above the road. This has caused quite the headache for drivers. Some forced to take a two-hour detour. Officials have tried to keep the left lanes clear for response vehicles. So far, they say there has not been a problem, but just ask the driver. Several drivers stopped at nearby gas stations had to make new plans. I have plans this evening in St. Louis. So it's like showering, getting dressed, getting ready to go. So everything's pushed back. I'm almost tempted to go home and try again tomorrow. What's your deadline to get to Tennessee? Well, it's supposed to be there tomorrow. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> it's like going to be a little bit late. Now, this is just one area, but there are several here across Waynesville. Folks are having to throw away pretty much all of their belongings. People here on this street are going through furniture 
everything they own and just having to throw them into trailers. But one good part of all of this, the volunteers are already showing up everywhere. Friends and neighbors and complete strangers are already helping out with the cleanup. At the Red Cross shelter at the St. Robert Community Center, donations have poured in with volunteers sorting through piles and piles of donated clothing and other household items so flood victims will be able to easily find what they need.